for pure racing enjoyment, it's hard to top Modified Mania. Today on Engine Power, it's going to get loud in St. Louis. Plus, when the crew from Procharger brings in a Corvette and a hot new supercharger, you know you're going to have a good time. Welcome to Engine Power. We're at Tri-City Speedway just outside of St. Louis to bring you all the action from Modified Mania. It's three days of full throttle, action-packed, high horsepower racing out on the dirt track. And we have over 100 cars competing here for first place in an ever-increasing payout. Now, we're just here on day one, and there are guys streaming in here from all over the United States. The cream of the crop is here to race on the dirt, and you're going to see all the action. Each of the three nights, drivers take part in heat races to qualify for the A main, the big daddy, if you will. The winner of the A main wins the night. Each night of racing functions as a self-contained event with no carryover into the following day. Thursday's winner takes home $3,000. Friday is worth $4K, and Saturday's first place finisher will pocket a $5,000 purse. The A main races start with a field of 26 cars. 16 of the cars are determined by points earned in the heats and qualifiers. Points are also awarded based on passing other racers, giving an extra incentive to overtake as many vehicles as possible. Eight more cars will qualify for the A main by placing first or second in the four B main races. In addition, there are two provisional spots. Just getting into the show is tough. They have uh, several races that you have to get through to qualify for the main event, and then once you're there, you have to uh, make it happen. The first key to winning? study track conditions, and be ready to make adjustments. The track's always changing, so your car could be really good when you go out to hot lap or qualify, and then uh, it's gonna change on you as the track goes away, so you have to have a lot of knowledge on how to set the chassis up. Since these vehicles must survive three nights of brutal full contact competition, tough decisions must be made. If a driver is running near the head of the pack on Thursday, should he push the car past the limit to take the checkered flag at any cost? Winning is what it's all about, but a major breakdown could put a race team on the sideline for the remaining two nights. I mean, I'm not gonna say I'm gonna hold back at all tonight, because I mean, I'm here to try to win every single race, but uh, we focus on tonight first, because you have to get through tonight to move on to tomorrow night. We're here because we love grassroots racing, but there's another reason, and it's near and dear to us. Summit Racing wanted to build a car to help celebrate their 50th anniversary. It honors the racing enthusiasts who make up the foundation for the automotive aftermarket. When Pat and I were asked if we wanted to join in on this build, we said heck yes. It all started with a stellar, impressive race car's chassis from Don Jumper. Back in the shop, we started the assembly by installing the sheet metal for the driver's compartment. Then the pedals went in along with the lines. The front suspension was next. The tubular A-arms, spindle, caliper, and rotor went on as an assembly. After that, we installed the quick change rear end along with all of its trick suspension components. We finished off the body and took the car to impressive race cars for a final nut and bolt session. Finally, Mike Harrison, one of the premier drivers in dirt track racing, took it for a few test laps. On Saturday night, this UMP Modified will go to auction with proceeds benefiting Shriners Hospital for Children. Uh, of course, obviously the Children's Hospital is a, a great cause, so we're, we're just excited to, for this whole thing to come together this weekend. Coming into tonight's race, Mike Harrison was easily the points leader with more than 30 wins and over 2,300 of a possible 2,400 points for the season. But tonight was not his night. During the first qualifier, his car got pitched a little too far sideways, and he cut into the infield on turn four. The night didn't get any better from there, and the six-time national champion missed out on the A main. No question, Thursday night was dominated by Shannon Babb. He took the top spot in both late model and modified classes. Shannon always races late model, but he doesn't usually run the modified class. His car was a loner from his brother-in-law. Any night that's really good, and you know now the next couple nights we can kind of relax. But uh, you know, when it's your night, it's your night. Everything just really fell together for us really nice last night. Up next, it's an exciting, terrifying place. 
we take you inside the mind of a race car driver. It's the second night of racing at Summit's Modified Mania. The Tri-City Speedway in Granite City, Illinois is rocking with stands full of fans enjoying plenty of high-speed, full-contact dirt track competition. We'd like to give you a better idea of what it's like to take part in three nights of no-holds-barred racing. No one can capture the intensity of this experience better than the drivers themselves. Well, you ever know anybody that does drugs? gets addicted to drugs and they shouldn't. This is this is a serious drug. You get addicted and uh, it's a rush you wouldn't believe. Six, seven, eight hundred horsepower, just like that. When you're taking that 2,400 pound car in the corner as fast as you can, it automatically goes into a drift on its own. You're just trying to control the drift, hold traction and, and get the car going the other direction and, and get off the corner as fast as you can. So uh, kind of being in control but out of control at the same time. Be competitive in our sport you, you got to have no fear you got to be able to drive in the corner and not lift and that's one of the hardest things to ever do in the sport these guys they're the best racers in the country you got a lot to learn in a short amount of time if you want to go out there and be competitive and tonight was twice as rough and raucous as the first last night's winner shannon babb took ninth place in the modified a main and again points leader mike harrison was notably absent after another difficult evening a new winner emerged as Trent Young took advantage of a potent combination, a third place starting position, and some very skillful driving. We come out with a good night through the qualifiers and got to start toward the front. The car was just dialed in perfect for it. And I uh, just set sail from there and uh, tried to not look back and try not make a mistake. On night three, the A mains were preceded by a special event to support a life-changing organization. And Pat and I were super proud to be a part of it. The UMP modified built to honor Summit Racing's 50th anniversary was auctioned off, with all proceeds benefiting Shriners Hospitals for Children. The winning bid of $30,000 was placed by Rodney Standerford. You could say he was excited by the win, but that would be an understatement. I didn't get an invite to the dome, but by God, I got a new race car! Bam! Yeah. Hey, uh, also, what's more, these drivers, who seemed so heartless in the heat of battle, turned out to be all hard. They, along with Tri-City Speedway, raised another $3,000 for the cost. When the drivers took the field for the modified A main, Mike Harrison had one thing on his mind, redemption. After two nights of not making the big show, he had had enough. Starting from a modest ninth place position, Harrison did what he does best, race hard. He hammered the throttle and forced his way to the top of the pack claiming the checkered flag and the UMP Dirt Car Racing National Championship. I'm just, I'm, I'm happy that uh, we made the show tonight and we came out on top. Up next, a supercharger system that's streetable and makes over a thousand horsepower. Take a look at what showed up. It's the latest Z06 Corvette that Chevrolet sent off the production line with a supercharged 6.2 liter V8 that produces 650 horsepower at the crank. The reason it's here is easy to see on the windshield decal. It's getting pro-charged. Mike and I are here with Walt Sipp and Eric Radsons, who both play big roles in the success of Pro Charger. Bringing new kits to market on a regular basis is the key to their growth. And just like our builds in the past, they brought a kit for the Z06 that's gonna catch you by surprise. Pro Charger equipped vehicles have put big numbers up on our chassis and engine dyno over the years. Mustangs have picked up over 270 horsepower with the newer P1X head unit. SUVs and trucks are also in the lineup, like this SRT8 Jeep Cherokee that lays down a 3.9 second 0 to 60 acceleration fall. Have a street or strip vehicle? This 406 inch small block Chevy will get your attention with an F1A Pro Charger and air to air intercooler. It made an impressive 993 horsepower on 93 octane pump gas. To install the Pro Charger, we need to remove a few pieces, like the hood. A serious sports car needs serious stoppers, and the six-piston carbon ceramic disc brakes will certainly do the job right.
Mike's doing all the hard work. Let's talk about what you had to do to get things in and ready to make our 1,200 horsepower with the crank goal. Well, 1,200 horsepower is a huge power number. So we wanted to make sure we could get air in and out of the motor, get fuel into the motor to support that and control it. So we reached out to some of the best in the business. We got Brian Tooley here for all camshaft and valve train components. I got Cords Performance to supply us some extra fuel from the fuel tank. Uh, Deechworks got the injectors and we're gonna control all of that with a Holly ECU. But, so we didn't spend all day plugging this thing in, I reached out to Crawford Racing and they made us a plug and play harness. That's pretty sweet, well I can't wait to see it. Walt and Eric have already installed the upgraded camshaft, fuel pump, and ignition components. All we have to do is remove the factory supercharger. Since Mike and Eric have the old system off, we're going back on with something a little bit different. Tell me about it. Well, this is the factory supercharger here. Uh, for GM, it worked really well for the intended horsepower range. It's a little bit small, inefficient, and the intercooler is a little bit inefficient for our needs for this high horsepower application we're going to do. So what we did was in-house we designed and built our own billet intake manifolds. We've got a couple different versions here. We make one for the LT1 and the LT4 car, which we're working on today. We have a satin finish and we have a black finish. Uh, we've got a couple of different top plate options you can select from. We also have our own fuel rail application for port injection. Uh, you can also do the plain style here, so if you wanted to do a methanol or your horsepower application wasn't quite as high and you didn't need anything, you could go with the plain style and, and do the job. Well, an important part of making this type of power is cooling the incoming air. Tell me about your intercoolers. Well, we've got three different intercoolers we can use on this application. We have our 1,000 horsepower capable air to air. We have our 1,250 uh, horsepower capable air to water, which is what we use in this car. On this particular application, we reuse the factory heat exchanger, but we also have one for the LT1 where it becomes a new heat exchanger, our intercooler system and the whole piece. And then finally, our 1500 horsepower capable race intercooler, which actually utilizes uh, an ice chest in the trunk of the car. Wow, well, let's uh, get this one put on and uh, get moving on it. All right. The majority of Procharger systems, such as their HO systems, Stage 2 systems, and tuner kits, use an air-to-air -air intercooler. Air-to-air -air outperforms air-to-water unless there is a provision made to cool the heated water. Since we've got a heat exchanger cooling the H2O, and we're looking for maximum horsepower, we're running air-to-water. Up next, we install the heart of the system and get to the heart of the matter. We're back on engine power, looking for maximum horsepower from a Procharger equipped Z06. After some preliminary work, we're ready to install the most exciting piece of the system. Well, now that we have the intercooler stuffed in there, what's next? Well, now the fun part can begin. We're going to take this billet bracket, we're going to bolt this thing up to the engine so that way we can hold this F1A94 head unit. And since we're going for big power, Pat, we opted for the 10 rib drive system so we can put this big belt on here and never worry about any kind of belt slip. Excellent. It's going on. The bracket will hold a 9-inch blower with a self-contained oiling system. No need to plumb. It's designed to be durable and ready for over 1,000 horsepower exactly what we're looking to make. The beefy 10 rib belt provides extra reliability. All right, we're on the home stretch. Tell me about the centerpiece of this system. Well, now it's time for the head unit installation. So we've talked about it before. This is the F1A94 head unit. We're just gonna show the different finishes here between the uh, polished finish or the satin black. But the coolest thing about our superchargers, we make them in the USA. So right here on the table, we have our raw billet starting from a piece of forging gets machined down and eventually into this high efficiency impeller to help us make all that horsepower. The other thing you're gonna notice is we have a drain line right here. These units are self-contained, so they don't use any engine oil, but we do make it easy for you to change your oil down the road. Clamp is long to get clean air into the system, Procharger provides a cleanable conical air filter. Next, the intake and intercooler are connected with a high-quality silicone hose. The fuel lines are plumbed, followed by the regulator, which is mounted in the upper wheel well area. Then, a supplemental fuel pump gets connected. And 
now we are ready to get this Chevy on our DinoJet chassis dyno. We'll make a few test hits to make sure everything is in order. After a few test runs, we found what we're looking for. Oh, look at that, right there. <laughs> thousand Oh, I knew it sounded good. I knew it that sounded good. That is a good. thousand eighty-eight. And it, <laughs> it actually made an 856 pound-feet of torque. Yeah. Well, man, I'm overly impressed I with I am the extremely deal. impressed with this. It's hard to impress the engine guys when I'm saying, but you guys knocked it out of the park. Nice job. Thanks for bringing it. We appreciate it. Not a problem. No problem. Thanks for having us. Yeah, I'd be proud of 1250 crank horsepower on this yeah. thing. Heck yeah. One more thing before we go. Something to commemorate this Corvette joining the 1200 horsepower club. For more information on anything that you've seen today, visit PowerNationTV.com. Powertrain Products takes the same approach to quality control with their transmissions as they do their engines. They are fully remanufactured and also upgraded in several areas to fix known issues with any given piece. With new parts throughout and a fully remanufactured torque converter, they are tested on a proprietary transdynamometer for flawless function. They have a wide variety of transmission applications they cover, so to find your next replacement, go to powertrainproducts.com. To make tough cleaning jobs go faster and easier, Dremel has come up with their Versa High Speed Power Cleaner. It's compact and is designed to fit in one hand comfortably. It powers through tough cleaning situations with a 1900 RPM cleaning head that has a hook and loop system on it that you can attach different types of scrubber pads. It's water resistant, can be used in or outdoors, and comes with a USB charging adapter for the lithium ion battery that powers it. To check it out, go to Dremel.com. No one has a better feel for what a customer is going to need or want than somebody who does it every day and lives it. We really have our ear to the ground when it comes to what consumers are going to need, what they're going to want, what racers really going to feel like they want. We have pretty much the largest customer service, technical service staff in the industry, so when folks call us on the phone, we can be able to talk to them about all of their uh, application needs in regards to what head unit they need, what kit they need, and so on and so forth. We have over 30 different supercharger models depending on what the guy's application is, so we can definitely help them out with what they need. But the first order of business will be what are their goals? You know, where are they trying to get to? What do you do with the car? That sort of thing. So if somebody calls up and says, hey, I have a 2018 Mustang and I want to see what I can do to get the best out of it, we're going to ask them, is it a daily street car? Are you trying to race the car? Whatever the, what the situation might be. Next is going to be, okay, does it have any modifications already? And then we can kind of help them steer them in the direction they need. Some guys, a completely stock car, they can do our, what we call our complete system, where it comes with all the tuning and fuel system components to get, to, to get to their application set up, in some cases even California Mission compliant. When you're just normal driving around, uh, street car, you know, cruising down the freeway or getting stuck in traffic or whatever the case may be, the bypass valve is letting the boost out of the engine when you don't need it. So you're going to get everyday streetability, drivability, fuel mileage, so on and so forth. Uh, when you want it. But the nice part is is that when you want to get wild and crazy then you just you know jump the throttle, map the throttle, whatever you decide to do and uh, all that boost is going to be going in the engine. Most of our kits they come with what we call our ProFlow bypass valve. But we have a bullet bypass valve, a race bypass valve, a pro race valve. So it really just depends on what you're doing. We have different tubing sizes. There's a huge array of intercoolers the guys can choose from. Uh, if it's a carbureted application, a bunch of different car paths the guys can choose. Our superchargers, we make up to an F3X 146, uh, which is one of our new models. That supercharger is around a 3,500 horsepower capable supercharger. We, we start superchargers around a 50 horsepower, so we can cover a huge spread from 50 horsepower to 3,500 horsepower. I don't think there's really anybody else that can do that. Even recently when we did the Corvette with the F1894 supercharger, that's a, a supercharger that a lot of guys will drive on the street, 1,000 horsepower street car but it's also a record-setting ultra-street blower for an all-out race guy, so um, a lot of our superchargers have a lot of versatility to it. One of the big things, too, is made in USA. We make everything in-house. Um, there's very little that we don't do when it comes to our kits. Obviously, there's a few purchase components, as with anything, but everything's designed, built, manufactured, CNC, welded, you know, so on and so forth, right in-house. A lot of the guys will look at for instance, uh, one of our billet intake manifolds or one of our intercoolers or whatever the case is and say, man, that, that's a really nice expensive robot you have. Well, that is hand-built by someone, not a robot.